Okay, my name is Jared, and this across from me is... Jonathan Mano. And as soon as I introduce you, yep. you don't say anything. Yeah. And I'm a virgin <laughs> podcaster. Now you're sharing too much. No, no, a podcaster. First podcast, yes. Yep. And Virgin Virgin. <laughs> That's something okay. different. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Why don't you introduce them to yeah, what this what, is. What the idea of the podcast is. This is a podcast called The Movie Gumshoe. <laughs> Did you just click your pen into the microphone? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. Sorry. I didn't get a clean pull of what I wanted to call this podcast. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, when I said I want to call the podcast The Gumshoe Movie Podcast, what was your first thoughts? Well, the literal sense of the name Gumshoe is a detective, but no one knows that. So we should be like the movie detective podcast. Because everybody who know what a gumshoe is died in 1942. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's just everyone going, I don't understand this gum on it. What is that? And because then they'll look it up and go, oh. But if we call it the movie detective podcast, people are like, oh, you just do detective podcasts movies? about detectives. Right. And that limits us. It does. It but at the same time, yeah. I like the gumshoe name. It's fun. And then right. people will look it up and yeah. go, oh. So I think it's perfect. And by people, you mean like me? my wife? Yes. <laughs> who lives with me. She's like, what? what is all this shit doing in our house? Yes. I said, I have a podcast. Yes. Would you like to listen to it? She's like, you don't even have a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bought all this equipment on credit. <laughs> so I hope it makes money. Okay. The last thing the world really needs right now is another podcast. No. About movies. Wrong. The yeah. last thing the world needs right now is another pandemic. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's true. After that, it's... Keep it... Uh, all right. Keep it light. Keep it light. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. As a gumshoe movie detective uh, podcast, what are we talking about? Okay. Here's how we are different from other movie podcasts. Ah, Because you yeah. and I love... Movies, just like everybody else who listens to movie podcasts, you listen to them because you love movies. And the people doing the podcast absolutely love movies. We love movies. We watch a shit ton of them, just like everybody else. We're not special. But the difference in ours is the gumshoe idea, the detective idea, is that we're going to go through systematically, almost like trying to solve a crime oh, yeah. of every part that goes into making a movie. Basically the big parts. The editor, cinematographer, the main actor, probably sometimes the supporting role, mm -hmm. depending on the movie. And the movie we're going to talk about tonight, which is a Liam Neeson movie, written With by Liam, Liam Neeson, Neeson, starring Liam Neeson. <laughs> you don't need Directed it. Directed by, by Liam, Liam Neeson. Neeson. Yeah, exactly. The so one that you left out was the director. And the director. And the movie we are investigating is the Liam Neeson 2022 Coming out this weekend, I forgot the name of the movie. Right, there you go. <laughs> Which is ironic. You nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I can laugh. That's the I'm the bad man. I have been for a long time. Have you seen a trailer from memory yet? No. That's three really? people like yeah. to do <laughs> Found them on the floor. Your shooter's losing his mind. Anything else I can do for you? The room number again? It's on the key holder. Ah. It, think of Taken, but with Alzheimer's. For sure. Hugo thinks it's a pro settling scores. Trafficking, Vincent Sierra. I can't keep doing your job for you. Who is this? He's taking out the traffickers that we couldn't. I want justice. We all have to die. What's important is what you do before you go. Let's just dive right into this. Are we just watching another Liam Neeson vehicle? Did the producers and the director, the studio heads, get together and say, like, we need to cash in on this Taken franchise by putting Liam Neeson yet again on the cover of a poster with a gun in some sort of blue sepia tone action thriller? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's a problem. Yeah. Really quick, side note. Sure. Are we talking about writers as well? Yes, okay. 100%. Okay, writers. Perfect. Okay, okay. Sorry if I just like ruined your train of thought. No, baby. It's our first time. Exactly. <laughs> uh, in film school, I learned it's first Ooh, made. Oh, humble yeah. brag. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Scottsdale <laughs> Community College Ooh, Film School. Of me. <laughs> That's really interesting. You went to Scottsdale Community College for film because I went for film. Yeah. And I'm in my first class. 
And I'm on the third day of my first class, and the teacher says, leave. And I had to leave. That was it. And I was like... Well, you weren't signed up in the class. I was. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I was just like, man. And then I left. Just like, showed up. Yeah. So a movie's made... That was the fifth time I went to community college, by the way. With the depressed writer alone <laughs> in, their, in their house. Okay, let's be real. Their condo. That... Okay, their, their parents' summer home. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's written, and then... Actually... Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Sometimes I think I think it's written, then it finds a producer. Okay. I feel like it finds somebody who's like, right. I like this film. Yeah. Let me shop it. Give me a year. Let me have it for six months. Let me put it out there. Let me see what I can get on it. Right. If not, then it goes back to you. And that's where I want to lead into the director. Movie Suspect memory. number one. I'm yeah. just kidding. No, know. that's... That, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, so just it. in case nobody does realize, gumshoes are detectives. All right, Jared, keep going. And bit. we are not detectives either. No. Neither do we work in the film industry. <laughs> nope. Okay, so this director, Martin Campbell. You might recognize some of his work. Number one, I'd say his most successful movie is a toss-up between two movies. Which two? It would be 1995's GoldenEye and 2006 Casino Royale. Yeah, well, then that's easy. It's absolutely not GoldenEye. It's Casino Royale. No, it's not. I GoldenEye was... GoldenEye. <laughs> How much did GoldenEye make? Did you do the research on oh, that? Oh, yes, I did. Okay. I actually got all of the... Okay, first, let me now tell you Now, we're talking 1995 you money. You told me what movie we're doing. And I yeah. Said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you told me the director, and I was like, I don't know who that is, whatever. Then you sent me a list of the movies he's done, and I'm like, oh, man, I guess he's my favorite director. GoldenEye... Mm. Budget sixty million. Nice. Box office three hundred and fifty six point four million. Now is that? Did you know if that's domestic or is that? That's everything, baby. Oh, worldwide. Yeah, we're not playing around. Casino Royale, a hundred and fifty million. So they trusted him a little bit more. Yeah. Same thing, you know, James Bond. Four hundred and sixty six point five million. Now that's. That's 2006 money. I would say, due to inflation, no. GoldenEye. Right, and I would say you're a nerd because nobody thinks like that when we're I talking did, about box I office. Really, I think about it. Okay, so let's just say Martin Campbell launched the career of two 007s. Not related to the Campbell Soup Company. No. He launched the career of Pierce Brosnan as James Bond and, of course, Daniel Craig well, as well, James Bond. Well, hang on. He launched? I would say so. If that you did, cool. like, a so-so unsuccessful James Bond movie, <laughs> did you know that there was, like, another James Bond between Roger Moore and Timothy Dalton? Oh, oh excuse me, excuse whoa. me. Whoa. Whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, Sean Connery yeah. and Roger Moore. There cool. was, like, another guy. Really? Yeah, oh. exactly. Okay. One movie sucked. Never James Bond again. So it's a big deal. But let's also run down the roster of some of his other movies that Martin Campbell directed. Please do. Okay. Starting in 1994. Now, I know you never heard of this, but I'm talking about the cocaine laden. <laughs> I just forgot his name when I said cocaine. The star? Yeah. Oh, that's a Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta. Oh, that's baby. It. Yeah. Who doesn't love Ray Liotta yeah. in Goodfellas? Goodfellas, of course. Ray Liotta, yep. and I know you're not like me, who had a poster of No Escape in his bedroom in high school. Okay, Yeesh. so the yeah, next one. Most of us had posters of girls, but okay. Keep going, Jared. <laughs> I mean, he was holding a rocket launcher. Mm. Let me hit you up real quick. Okay, no go, Escape, $20 yeah. million to make, made oh. $22.4 Success! $2.4 million gross, baby, in the pocky, as they call it on the set. I don't know. I've never been to a set. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's no escape. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys, uh, Martin Campbell, he's yeah. not a loser on these movies. All the no. movies we're going to mention, he makes money. You know, that's the least he's made is $2 million okay. profit. As long as you're in the green, you're happy, you know? So you can make a million You can make a million dollars and be like, it's not $20 million, but it's not a loss. It's better than going negative in the box office. Fucking one away. Exactly. Right. Keep yep. it going. Okay, Go on. what's his next one? Mask of Zorro. Ma no, GoldenEye, then Mask of Zorro. Okay, GoldenEye. Right. Oh, yeah. That Gross, two hundred ninety-six million right there. Keep going, Master oh, Zorro. Love Master Zorro. Nineteen ninety-eight brings yep. you Antonio Banderas. Now, mm -hmm. is it racist to cast <laughs> Antonio Banderas? No. Why? Oh, okay, okay. I'm just saying. How is it racist? Desperado comes out. We're like, what is it? This okay. guy's hot. Right. This guy yeah. is really going places. Oh yeah. We need to get him in a movie. <laughs> next. What do we right. got? What do we got? Oh, you're, is it racist because it's Zorro? I'm just saying. You're not gonna put. Ray Liotta in a Zorro <laughs> mask. You're gonna well, get. How well, dare let me, you? Let me we tell did you like this. put. Well, hang on. <laughs> let me stop you right there. 
Nothing against Ray Liotta. If aliens invaded Earth, we won't kill you unless right. you send us your best actor. Absolutely. We're probably going to send Anthony Hopkins. He's incredible. <laughs> so you send him up there. He's great. He can play whatever he wants to play. And he True. can pull off a Spanish guy. Technically, he can't, but technically, he can. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do the research. Zorro's Mexican. Daniel Banderas... Could be. I'm gonna say he's not. I'm gonna say 90% sure I he's still Mexican. Don't, I still don't know. Fine as hell. Zora's yeah. supposed to be fine as hell. Yeah. Not a problem at all. You know who also is? Who? Kathleen Zeta Jones. Jesus Christ. Okay, then of course, Vertical Limit. Oh, man. Now, I wanna also say, Vertical oh, Limit, oh, I would have not put this on the list at all. Really? Because who watches that? I. You said you sent me the list of things. I go, I've seen yeah. all these movies. I yeah. haven't seen Vertical Limit. Oh, my God. You have seen it. My older cousin, Nikki, <laughs> yeah. made me watch Vertical Limit probably a million times when it came out, I yeah. think in 2000. It's that memorable. And I started laughing because <laughs> I was like, this movie is erased from my memory. And all I can remember is the beginning scene yes. where they're rock climbing. <laughs> yes. And the dad's like, you got to let me go. It's a bad situation. Oh, and I'm just like, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was yeah. like, great movie when yeah. it comes to rock climbing movies. First of all, yeah, if you want to start a movie off right, you first, you can either right. kill a dog. Yes. Whoa. Right, and then Fuck. you can either I'm gonna, cut the rope on your dad while you're Can I double climbing. down on you? Yeah. You're rock climbing <laughs> with your dog. <laughs> In the way, it's too much. I would walk out of that theater oh my God. so fast. Oh my God. By the way, I, I might have said it's the best rock climbing movie. It's not. Yeah. That's Cliffhanger. It's true. Starting close. Everybody knows that. My Uncle Vinny's favorite movie, Candy Cliffhanger. Yep. All right, okay. keep going. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, oh, yeah, by yeah, the yeah, way, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mask of Zorro made the producers $155 million. Woo. That's Mask of Zorro. Vertical Limit, again, yeah. not a loser, guys. Mm -mm. It made them profit of $140 million. That's not box office. Yeah. That is what they've made. Profit. Yes, profit. Woo! 140 okay. million. I'm telling you, this guy's not a loser when he makes a film. I promised myself I wouldn't be a woo guy, and I did it twice. It's okay. I wooed today on the golf course. So. Oh, nice. All right. And then we got Casino Royale. Uh, Covered yeah. that. Let's Woo! just jump right. Oh, oh, oh. Real quick, Casino Royale is yeah. number one. Yeah. In the pocket. Gross, yeah. baby. Of course. $466.5 million. Dollars. Yeah, shirtless Daniel Craig. You can't go wrong. I wanted to say shirtless Eva okay. Green, but she's right. who? Topless. Exactly. Oh. oh yeah. Damn. Uh, uh, real quick, back to Vertical Limit. Um, first collaboration with this cinematographer, who we're gonna talk about as well. In memory. Now that's what I. That's the other reason why I wanted to talk about these collaborations that happen. Like, if you're in the industry, if you're trying to get into the industry, would you always work with the same director if you're cinematographer? Like, you know, does the production crew hire you? Who puts the word in for you? That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Is this like, can you and your friends break into Hollywood? And is Martin Campbell friends with this, you know? Right. I would assume so after a while, right? Yeah. Can we on. talk about one more thing also later yeah. on in our podcast? Not for every movie, but for movies that deserve it. Can we talk about... The set designer, the production uh, designer, yeah. the guy who decides like, yeah. oh, we're getting killed in a lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Let me design the inside of the lighthouse. And then you watch the movie and you're just like, the inside of this lighthouse is giving me a feeling. And then that's it. And then you leave the movie and you go, that was awesome. Who designed the sets? We, maybe sometimes, not all the times. I like that. What's the what's the word the like atmospheric, atmospheric you know yeah yeah like something like like a great a great movie and see I don't know the production yeah guy uh, City of the Dead. With okay. Christopher Lee. Uh, it, it looks so great, and the graveyard looks great, and the cemetery looks great, and the inn looks great. And I think yeah. that's why the director works a lot with the cinematographer. Like, right. Is it a beautiful-looking movie? Mm -hmm. And i got to tell you about the cinematographer later. We'll get into that. He, he's got a quite an impressive resume as well, and kind of scattered the way Martin's is as well. Okay, going on to the next one. This guy directed... I didn't know. The Green Lantern. I know, Lantern, I didn't know. What year did he Ryan do Green Reynolds. Lantern? It was in 2011. And what year did he do Casino Royale? Casino Royale was 2006. What an interesting, and I'm sure he's done movies between those. Yeah. But I mean, what what trip do you take to go from Casino Royale yeah. to Green Lantern? Yeah. And then I wonder, does this Martin Campbell guy, is he like a comic book guy? He's like, oh, I've always loved Green Lantern as a child. Or is the studio like, I want to get into that too. Here's $100 million to make Green Lantern. Martin Campbell, here's my like gumshoe opinion of him. Uh, oh, man, you said that. He's oh. not a passion director. He is a paycheck director, this fellow. I'll tell you right now, within the seven movies we've mentioned, well, we're about to mention number seven, The Foreigner, by the way, he has made... A, over a billion dollars in profit for the studio. So hell yeah, he's yeah. not a passionate director. He's a money director. Good for him. It, it was interesting to see that he directed Goldeneye and then also Casino Royale. Maybe he likes the James Bonds. Uh, he, yeah, 
I don't know. So, okay, well, going on to Green Lantern, with that, you understand there's a lot of studio interference. Oh, no, actually, go into the, what financially was it. Okay, financially, surprisingly, it was not. The movie made $19.9. $20 million the movie made. Yeah. The movie made $20 million. Yeah. Even if the critics give yeah. it a star, and Rotten right. Tomatoes gives it no tomatoes, and right. it's all this trash... It doesn't matter because the big producer money men are just like <laughs> loving it, swimming in money, fucking Scrooge McDuck style. They don't care. Yeah. I walked out. Well. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I never actually paid for it. Right. I was at the movie theater with my dad. Uh, I can't remember what we were going to see. Yeah. We had like 20 minutes before the movie starts. Uh-huh. So we just walk into Green Lantern <laughs> and we're just waiting in the little entrance area watching the movie. Yeah. Holy hell. It was so, we were just like, we didn't even last the 20 minutes. We were there for like three minutes. Like, do you know? Left. This is another little trivia with that. You know who his friend was? Uh, Ryan Reynolds in the movie. It was Taika Watiti. Was it really? Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yeah. I thought he had a fat friend. Mm mm. No. Oh, wow. It was Taika. You know, I went to uh, what used to be Alamo Theaters, but is now Majestic Theaters. Oh, yeah. And oh man, what movie? Oh, I went to go see Jojo Rabbit. Mm-hmm. And so they have a bunch of. How do you say his name? Taika Watiti. Taika Watiti. Uh, titties. Right, he's not there, but they're yeah. uh, majestic, which used to be Alamo Draft House, used oh. to show stuff involving the film you're about to see. Yep. And this one was about Nazis, so I guess they couldn't show that stuff. No. But they could show. They couldn't get about memorabilia. Yeah, no. They could. <laughs> they know they like to do yeah. that. Yeah. Like little <laughs> stuff from you want the this movie. Patch? Like a good little uh, I'll skip, armband. I'll skip you. the patch. I mean, it has the um, <laughs> JoJo Rabbit. But they had Taito Waikiti's, like, Stuff that he did for independent film festivals. Oh, okay. It's trash. Yeah. It wasn't funny. It was filmed bad. It was stupid. It was unenjoyable. And I was <laughs> mad when I saw it. Right. And now look at him. Yeah. So I'll tell everybody right now, yeah. whoever's possibly listening to this, and like, oh, you never be a director. You probably can. And I'm not saying like he's not, he's a great director. Yeah. But it's not like he started, his mom was a Hollywood producer and he right. got a movie. Right. He just started filming stuff. Yeah. He was the, in one of the film festival entries, he was the only one in the film. It was just him playing, like, three parts. And I think he got, like, third place. And that got him noticed. Wow. So don't feel like, oh, I need to, I need a big, expensive camera. He, right. He definitely didn't. No. Anyway, sorry. We're going off track. Yes. No. Green Lantern. Yep. It made $20 million, Not a loser. You asked the question, is it his fault it failed? Right. If you personally think he's a money director, right. then no, it's not his fault. Because if he's a money director and the producers, a.k.a. the money, are saying, no, 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 we want it like this. Yeah. Director is going to be like, all right, done, whatever. I have no vision for it. I exactly. Have for it. Yeah. So, so I don't really blame Martin Campbell for the, especially for the fanfare. Like you know, the fans did not like Green Lantern at all. Oh no. Um, and then obviously the studio did not either, to the point where it was not going to green light <laughs> a sequel. Oh, all right. Man. So go- that, was good. that was bad. No, that was that great. Was bad. Yeah. I almost just jumped out that window. No, that was right really nice. You. <laughs> okay, <laughs> going on to okay now the uh, next two movies. Yes, these seem like all precursors I, to this movie. Man. I can I just tell you I love the Foreigner. Right. The, why? If you haven't seen the Foreigner, sorry, Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan. Haven't seen it. Oh my god, it's so good. Yeah. After that, I don't know what happened to Jackie Chan. He went oh, back to yeah. Cheney, and um, they took him. And he's worth billions of dollars. In China. And he's old. He's not allowed China here. China dollars are worth way more than American dollars. No way. I'm pretty sure. A yen? Are. Yeah. Is that what they have over there? Yeah. I don't know. If he's in China, he's locked in the house right now, so it doesn't matter. Perfect. Big, big. Oh, man, that movie was so good. And who doesn't like Jackie Chan? I mean, honestly, who doesn't like Jackie Chan? Yeah. I mean, he was a superstar. Yeah. Huh. Love Jackie Chan. And then Pierce Brosnan's also. Awesome. Awesome. You got to watch the movie. It's good twist, good movie. Good everything. It's really entertaining. And yeah, Jackie Chan at his age, which I'm just going to assume, I'm not sure, he's in his early 60s, still doing his own stunts. And I'm talking about like climbing up a wall super fast. Can I sound like a piece of shit right absolutely. now? Absolutely. Like that sounds like a movie Oh, you that... want to start now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a movie that, um, you know, it has more... Uh, like drama story to it. I don't watch Jackie Chan for the story. Uh, see? I watch that. Okay, so that guy to you're kick limiting some yourself. Fucking ass. He, first off, he does kick some fucking ass. Okay. Second off, right. He is great in this movie. It's like when so he's, he's not like an aging porn star. Where no, 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 like, no, no. Like, he, I watched Jenna older. Jameson. He's here. Let me just give you the rundown, and then we're actually gonna get into memory a little bit. I I'm think. making like 
fuck sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the rundown of The Foreigner. A girl is killed in, if I can remember correctly, because I only saw it when it came out, uh, an IRA attack, which is like the Irish Republican Army. Oh. Or whatever. I thought called. it was like an investment. No, no, no. Like somebody, a car bomb goes off or something, okay. and Jackie Chan's daughter dies. She okay. wasn't the target. Right. And she dies. Jackie Chan keeps wanting to find out, like, who was responsible. Right. And then he, he's not getting help from uh, yeah. the policeman or whoever it was, yeah. whoever Pierce Brosnan plays. I'm not going to spoil anything. Okay. And then he goes on his own investigation to find out who killed his daughter. Right. And he does a great fucking job. Sounds good. Okay. Yes. So, jumping into the next movie, and I'm going to stick to it, I think that The Foreigner and Protégé that came out in 2021 are precursors to this movie. What like, do you mean by precursors? Like, I feel like they're in the same genre. They're in the same vein. Like, it, essentially, they're the same note. Yeah. So it's like Martin Campbell goes, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you want from memory. Yeah. I did it twice before. My last two movies are the same. You know, like one man, one woman in did the Did you protege. see the project? No. Neither did I. No. Well, because I got sick of these Atomic Blonde ripoffs. Oh, like, man, Atomic Blonde was so badass. Yeah, it was my, great. My dad loves action movies, yeah. so I brought the DVD over. Oh. And I was like, watch this movie. Halfway through, he just gets up. Okay. And he starts doing things around the house. What? He, well, comes, he was watching The Protégé or Atomic Blonde? Atomic Blonde. What? Yeah, that's what I'm fucking saying. Oh. He comes back. He's like, what's going on? You should just lock the I door. You so, should have told him dude, to like, go so fix mad. something outside and just not let him back yeah. in. Well, I told you what he does because sometimes we go to the movie theater. Wait, what did he leave like when the... The two girls were smashing. And no, he was I like, can't honestly. Because that's what time I would leave. <laughs> Why would you leave at that time? Well, I lock it into my memory. <laughs> and and I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. I should have seen it. My dad's notorious for just yeah. leaving a movie theater. I get the time code on the movie. <laughs> and I'm like, I got to watch that again. You need help. <laughs> I'm telling your wife what you said. All right. So the Fortnite Pro. So you're tired of seeing this, this type of movies. Go on. That's it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You just tired of, like, the one-man army type thing? Like, let me, let me, I haven't seen Protégé, I have seen Foreigner, I have seen other movies Liam Neeson's in, and all the movies Liam Neeson is in, yeah. like, Taken and Took and all that stuff, yeah. is what I like to call, like, um, I don't know, like, small action movies, uh -huh. where the, it's not, like, grandioso, epic, like, uh, Independence Day action movies or Terminator action movies. Right. It's more like contained. Yeah. Where like you actually are thinking like, yeah, when I have a daughter, I might be able to do this stuff. A lot of these are PG-13 to go watch with your kids. Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> do you think that's what these are? I think there's a gap in the audience. I think it's 13, 14, 15-year-olds, and then it jumps to... 49 to 67 year olds. I think that's the. <laughs> I think so it's got it all gap. rounded out. Okay, yeah. okay. So I want to ask you we right, covered the you. Martin Campbell's yes. roster of movies. Yes. In this recent roster, what would you rank is the best one? The best one? Yes. Easily Casino Royale. I've watched it probably over 20 times. When that movie came out, I was just, I was just blown away. I was just like, I, oh my God, it's so cool. Do you think Martin Campbell considers that also like his? Do you think he cares to try to outdo that? Okay, I think movie? it's unfair to say like we're like throwing a lot on I'm Martin not Campbell. Saying memory is no, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm just saying like maybe Martin Campbell. Obviously, he's a director, so he does have some vision, does have some creativity. Right. But also, there is people in Hollywood that are just like I'm here to make a buck. So uh -huh. there's nothing wrong with like, yeah, I'm going to make a buck, but I'm still going to make it good. Okay. And then he's going to go home and he's going to laugh with his wife and kids and go, look how much money I made. Sure. Ha ha ha. Yeah. And, and they're like, but are, do you feel artistic? It's like, of course I do. And I think a million directors in Hollywood make movies just to make a buck. And then they hit one where they go, well, I like this. So I'm going to make it pretty much how I want to make it and still make money. And when you are given a budget... Over a hundred million, I'm pretty sure the studio's like, yeah, you have some say. We're giving you a we lot of money. We trust you. Yeah, and then look what it made. It made almost uh, five hundred million dollars. Right. Five hundred million dollars, not five million. The type of money anybody who is possibly listening would kill for. Five hundred million dollars. So, do you think this will be better than the Foreigner? No. You don't think so? No. And I'm only assuming off of the trailer that I've seen once. Right. So I haven't seen it yet. But the Foreigner. Uh, to me, it just, it was deep, man. You haven't seen Jackie Chan in a role like that before. Okay. Liam Neeson, man, We've his last 20 movies have been in a role like that before. Yeah, I could before. take the last 
eight Liam Neeson movies, and I could edit them, and you wouldn't even know the difference. You wouldn't even know That's if I'm, I'm showing, afraid of. I'd be like, what movie am I showing you? And you would have no idea. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We're there. I think I'm he's with in you. a movie where he fights the ice. I think Liam Neeson's in a movie where he's a truck driver, and he fights ice. That doesn't count. That's a Netflix movie. <laughs> yeah, but I imagine him calling a block of ice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about the writer. Okay, let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, sorry, let's move on from We'll, we'll go into that. So Fucking Martin Campbell, heck. we got him. We got you, Martin. We got you, buddy. We got you. We know you're just there to make a buck, and you don't have any artistic integrity. So realistic. Well, hey, whoa. <laughs> I'm ready to throw that guy <laughs> under the bus. Green Lantern was bad, but all right. <laughs> all right. As of so, right now, I'm going to say, if this movie dies, yeah. Martin Campbell is not the killer. Oh, I'll tell God you right now, baby. Damn it, you're good. <laughs> Green light it. <laughs> That's good. That's great. <laughs> The writer Dario Scardapan. Oh man, is he a is he Italian or is he Vietnamese? <laughs> what kind of name? Just depending on how you say it. Dario Scardapan. Scardapan. Okay, uh, this is his first time collaboration with Martin Campbell. I don't oh. think it's really a collaboration because mm. something else I found out about this writer was uh, it's actually an adapted screenplay from a foreign yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, you told me that, that was very successful. Yeah, like okay. a quick little look, a glance on IMBD, it was uh, like ranked 7 out of 10 or something like that. The foreign film. Yep. Dario has written four episodes of The Punisher for Netflix. I uh, did full not seasons. enjoy that. Yeah, and a lot of people did. And then one episode of State of Affairs. I think it was a vehicle for some actress who played in Not Knocked Up. Sounds like a state, and yeah. everyone's cheating on each other. <laughs> Six episodes of The Bridge uh, from 2013 Don't to 2014. That. Oh, The Bridge. <laughs> the Bridge is, uh, isn't it like Texas and Mexico? It's about cops and drug dealers. Okay, I so he's good at crime dramas. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's that his sounds jam. Good. Anybody with a, a badge and a gun, it's all about him. Well, there you go. So he wrote a television drama called Faceless, starring Sean Bean, who most likely died in the movie. He played a federal prosecutor. <laughs> yeah, he, he goes deep undercover on the world of organized crime. Here's the thing. That movie f- made for television was directed by Joe Carnahan. You might know him as director of Cop Shop and The Grey to bring it back around to Liam Neeson. Oh, my gosh, The Grey. Yeah. He fights wolves on ice. <laughs> Liam Neeson on ice, <laughs> yeah. fighting but wolves. Like, is this a Liam Neeson this vehicle? This is great. <laughs> is this a Liam Neeson vehicle? And it's like, yeah, it is. Because the guy wrote the script. Who knows when he wrote it? Yeah. He could have wrote it 12 years ago. <laughs> he could have wrote it before Taken, but he wrote a script. Right. And it's out there, yeah. waiting to be picked up. Somebody yeah. reads it and goes, sure. this is a movie yeah. starring Liam Neeson. Yeah. Okay, I see, I see. For memory, yeah. But he just adapted that screenplay. Right. Um, how far of it was he just, like, watching the actual movie with subtitles and just, like... Typing it? <laughs> he just had it. He had Siri right. up next to the speaker. This really feels like a paycheck movie, and dude. Re- what well, is a paycheck like, movie? There's nothing wrong with like, that. It feels like... So, writer for hire... Definitely. I don't know. Nothing wrong with that either, baby. Not. You got the skill, do it. Here's where we're going to go real quick. Back to the beginning with the producers. This movie was produced by six, that's right, six different production companies. The budget is uh, projected to be around $30 million. So $30 million divided by six, five million or something like that. I'm thinking that this movie is essentially. A tax write-off. I don't know if this movie is even projected to make $2 million this weekend. How much do you think it's going to make in the weekend? Yeah. And how much do you think it's going to make overall? Okay, this past weekend had the bad guys at number one. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 as number two. Uh, Number three was Fantastic Beasts. Number four was Northman. Number five was The Unbearable Weight of a Massive Talent. Number six was Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. It's oh, uh, like a, see that. a foreign film. And then no, it's seven, not a foreign film. I'm pretty sure it is. No. It's not? That's the badass one where the mom, the Asian mom or lady or whatever, is like going yeah. through different dimensions. Oh, wow. Oh, dude, it looks sick. I think oh, it's I just gave myself away then. It's all right. No, keep going. I keep think going. If, it's got, if it doesn't have an American actor, it's a foreign <laughs> film that did really well. And it's like domestic area, and then they're like, you know who might like this? <laughs> Americans. No, it looked good. All right, keep going. Keep okay, going. I'm going to cut that. <laughs> All right, number seven is Lost City. 
Number ah. eight is Father Stu that I guess should have been streaming. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. My, the only thing I heard because my mom was like, we have to go see it. We have to go see it. We have to go see it. Yeah. It's not going to change my life. And number nine is Morbius. Yeah, I didn't want to see that. And number 10 is the Decimal Failure Ambulance. Yeah, well, I don't even That's understand. Like so sad. All that combined, I'm thinking... To be in the top five, you got to make close to $10 million. Okay, well, this is an not, opening week. Yeah. Okay, well, it's not that. Not going to do that. It's not, no, no it's not going to be top five. Six made $5 million. Do you think it will make around $5 million? On opening weekend, yeah. which is what, three days? Yeah. No. No. I am going to say this movie will make box office, domestic, opening weekend. $2 million. Yeah. I think so too. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, I'll take $2 million and $1. <laughs> This is Price is Right rules. Price is right. Yeah, so I'll take $2 million oh, cut and that, one. cut that. We don't have rights to say Price is Right. The right price. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll take so, $2 million and one. Okay. <laughs> okay, I guarantee. Guarantee? Yeah. Damn. Number seven in the box office. I don't know. I will go six, you son of a bitch, and I'll take $2 million and one. <laughs> All right, lock it in. Okay, so uh, let's go down to... The cinematographer. Now, yes, I want to talk to you about this. David Tattersall. He is the cinematographer who has worked with Martin Campbell four times. The protege, the foreigner, and then he's also worked on The Vertical Limit. And then without uh, working with uh, Martin, he's uh, actually worked with George Lucas. He worked with George Lucas what? on the Star Wars prequels. Oh, well, there you go. Is there really a cinematographer for Star Wars? Damn, now? you're cold. Oh, my gosh. No, there's not. What do you mean there's not? There's not Whoa. a cinematographer. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because it's all just George Lucas and whatever he wants? Oh, my bad. I should have asked you if you wanted another one. That would have been nice. <laughs> so. Ah, the cold crack of a Diet Coke. Perfect. So, yeah, I don't think that there is a cinematographer for Star Wars. I don't understand. There's not a cinematographer. Well, explain what you're saying. There is not. He obviously is credited as the cinematographer for Star Wars. He pointed and shot. Right. And then whatever the editors needed. Right. So, for hire. Right. Another for hire. Yeah, there's nothing wrong He's not with a for passionate hire. Guy. I'm talking about passion or paycheck. The reason why uh, people get into the industry is because they really want to make a good movie. They do, but you need to pay the bills. You're not going to wait ah. doing a fucking nine to five well, at an office waiting for somebody to come and give you a passionate movie to make. Well, then you do what Ben Affleck does. You do one for the studio and then one for yourself. Oh, one he, for the studio oh, and one he? for yourself. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he did wow. it with Daredevil. That's I thought he that just he totally did wanted. ones whatever he wants because they're not enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> they're not kidding enjoyable. Me? Have you seen the latest movie that which, Ben Affleck which did? Which one is it? For like Hulu? Go ahead. Tell me what it is. Where he just lets his wife have sex with a whole bunch of dudes. Go on. And then he murders them. Okay, go on. And he Spoilers. Says, like, That's the only way. Go on. All right, I'm not talking about that anymore. Okay, so who are we? T- we're talking about the cinematographer. I think that this guy uh, makes good-looking films. There's nothing, and I'm gonna say it again. There's nothing wrong for being a just for hire guy. You have a skill set, and yeah. you can do it. I'm sure if somebody comes along and gives them a script, he's like, "Oh my god, I love this stuff." He's gonna put his passion into it. But if something comes along and he's like, "What is it, Star? Wars, what do you want, George?" Okay, and then he's probably gonna be like, "Hey George, do you think maybe he'd be like no?" He's like, "All right," and then he's just gonna point and shoot. Nothing wrong with that, baby. Here's something else to talk about with this movie just being for hire. The editor. Now, again, the movie is made in three parts. It's made on the page, it's made on the screen, and then also made in the editing lab. Screen meaning like actually shooting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you'd be like, well, the page says that they're at a bar. It's like, well, we don't have a bar. Right. Well, what do we have? We have a... A liquor aisle at the yeah. store. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What do we'll you have, Chief? There. Why is he in the store? <laughs> and, then, and then at that point, they're like, well, shit, none of this stuff works. Right. Let's go ahead and cut it. Yep. Joe Francis is the editor. Now, this is also her first time working with Martin Campbell. Her? Oh. Yeah, so Martin brought oh on a cinematographer that he's worked with before. Right. Did not bring on a writer that he's worked with before. Right. Um, but again, as you said, it's more of a producer, you know, the writer goes to the producer, the producer goes to the writer. Mm -hmm. I think production just found everybody on this. The last movie she did was called Charming the Hearts of Men, 2021. It was a romance starring Kelsey Grammer. She also worked, this is ironic, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, (laughs) she also worked 
<laughs> with Paul Haggis, a director, three times. She worked on The Third Person in 2013, which is a romance starring Liam Neeson. Never seen it. Uh, no one has. He does romances? I guess. What is it? Uh, Listen to me very carefully. You took my heart. I have a certain set of skills that can <laughs> totally <laughs> turn you on yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would <laughs> never <laughs> romance with Liam Neeson well, because he's totally typecast now as... Liam Neeson. <laughs> why do they even characterize why him? Is he, why does he get a character yeah. name? Joe Francis. Also, she's... The, okay, she... In 2013, she did the romance Third Person with director Paul Haggis, starring Liam Neeson. A little bit before that, Next Three Days with Paul Haggis, starring also Liam Neeson. <sighs> in 2007, she did a mystery called In the Valley of Eli with director Paul Haggis. Don't tell me it stars Liam Neeson. No, okay. I think that one starred Russell Crowe. She has done a few movies, romance, action, mystery, uh, in 2007, 2010, 2013. It kind of took a hiatus. Can I, memory. is it too early? We haven't covered, have we covered everybody that's involved in making this movie pretty much? Yes. <sighs> I have not seen the trailer, okay? Mm-hmm. Just like you said, is it a tax break film? Do they know what they're making? Here's what it is. We're going to spend all of our time and all of the city's money putting two really good gumshoe detectives on the case yeah, just to find out, ah, shucks, it was a suicide right from the start. The studio knew what was happening. Everyone involved knew what was happening. And guess what? Spoilers, it's just like that movie Murder on the Orient Express. Everybody did it. R- right. Who would you toss into jail then? The producers for this? I, no, I would. Who's I would, guilty for Here's what I would do. Okay, who's decent. in the room? Yeah. Who's in there? Director. Okay, yeah. Producers. Boom. Writer. Boom. Editor. Bam. Cinematographer. Bingo. Maybe, and the actor. And a fucking PA for dramatic yeah. effect. I'm in there. I lock the door. I walk around. You're sniffing people Yes, out. and I go, I know what happened. They're all sweating, okay? I tell them, I know who killed this movie, and I know why. And then they're all sweating bullets, and I go, all of you killed this movie. You knew it was going to die. You knew what the film was. You just need a little tax break, baby. Just want to see if you can get a little green in your pocket. Nothing wrong with that, as I say on the set. Physically, I cannot take on that many people, so I wouldn't even try to arrest one. And then I'd unlock the door and let them all go. Because so, I'm sure the foreign yeah. film is a gem. A passion project. I bet it's a dime. I bet yeah. somebody wrote it and they're like, this is awesome, and yeah. I bet it's great. My father. This well, happened to my oh father. Oh, my God. Could you yeah. imagine? But then no, no, no. It's like, actually their mother, but right. everybody's like, but who I- wants to watch a movie about a female? <laughs> Doing something heroic. With a gun? Oh, my God. She can't kick down a door. Yeah, let um, me tell you. Oh, can you tell thing. me how much the, the protege made again? Oh, the protege? The okay, I get box office? Yeah. <laughs> 8.6 million. Yeah. But let's get real. We're in 2022. Right. Who's right. going to a box office besides me, baby? When did The Foreigner come out again? I, oh, let me look that up real quick. I'm going to guarantee it came out during the pandemic. It still made more than... No, no. Are you nuts? The Foreigner... <laughs> The I'm gonna cut out. 2017. <laughs> I'm gonna cut all that. The only one so known about saying, the pandemic yeah. was probably Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting all that. Oh my god. Okay. All now. right. Foreigner came out in 2017. Budget 35 million. It made box office 145.4 million. Mm. That's in the producer's pocket, oh as they say on the god. set. Yes. In the biz, they call yep. pockets pockies. Trust me. It made 110.4 million dollars. That will. Definitely buy you and a nice piece of cake. <laughs> Let me tell you the reasons why I think you're right. This was a suicide. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Liam Neeson somehow became a single action shooter genre movie. Like it just did. It's fine. For some reason, Jason Statham had the title for a while. It was always going to be Jason Statham kicking ass, taking names. It's been a tradition. As, yep. Let me get a clean take of it. It's been a tradition as old as fuck. <laughs> The tradition is old as fuck, baby. Yeah. Come on. You know how long people have been fucking? <laughs> as long as time. Like a long time. And you know the reason why I know? Because there's still people around. <laughs> All right. Basically, if you put Liam Neeson on a cover of a poster holding a gun, it's going to make some money. And I'll tell you why. It started in 2008. PG-13 movie called Taken. Uh. A budget of $25 million and a domestic domestic run of 145 million. How many times did you see Taken in the film? Look at me and be honest. Once. That's how many times you saw it in the theater? Yeah. I saw it three in times. The, in the theater? Yep. Why? 
I was. What year is that? 2008. Oh, I was a young boy in 2008, baby. Well, I guess you really couldn't see much action movies. 2006 with was uh, Casino Royale. I was still riding that one-man gun in high. Like, woo, I love that shit. Taken comes out, I'm like, this is badass. Now, it took some time for Hollywood to realize that this was a cash cow. So, The Unknown <laughs> came out in 2011, still PG-13, with a budget of $30 million and had a domestic run of $63 Never million. saw it. Well, not a lot of people did. But until Taken 2 came out in 2012, the following year, still PG-13 with a budget of $45 million, made $139 million domestically. Now we're in full throttle Liam Neeson action movies. Nonstop comes out in 2014, still PG-13, budget $50 million. How much? Domestic run, $92 million. It's a nice piece of cake. (laughs) And then, in 2014, the same year, Taken 3 comes out with a budget of $48 million. Tell me right now. A domestic run of $89 million. Oh, my God. That's such a nice piece of cake. money than Taken 3. I don't know. Oh, because I can tell you, Mm. um, Taken 3 was fucking trash. (laughs) (laughs) Taken 2 was doable. (laughs) Taken 3, Jesus, man, just stop. Not even beer goggles? Taken 3, it's just like... Because Taken 2, come on. At Taken I mean, three, that's the one you want to take, take home and marry. Okay, Taken one. Someone if I was cared. his friend in that movie, Liam Neeson's friend, I go, Liam, I'm so sorry what's happening to your daughter. Yeah. Can I help? He goes, <laughs> You can't help because you don't have a special set of skills. And I go, All right, I'll back off. Taken two comes out. I'm yeah. Liam Neeson's friend during Taken two. I go, Oh my god, Liam, I'm so happy what happened to you. What's going on? Can I help? He goes, like, You can't help again because you don't have a certain set of skills. All right, fine. Taken three comes out. Right. I'm Liam Neeson's friend in the Taken universe. I'd yeah. be like. Stay away from me. I'm going to be taken next. You're danger. Yeah. You're bad luck. You're like, get the fuck. You're Would like, he look, come after you, though? He's just bad juju <laughs> all, right, all well, around. Look this up while I'm, uh, while I'm reading off the next ones, if you, if you would. I'm uh, Hacker Man. Who is the director of Taken? Did, was it the same guy? Was it the same director did Taken Let 1, 2, and 3? Let me look it up, baby. Was it like a John Wick situation? Okay, going Ooh, on. Ooh, John Wick. In 2014, of course, Taken 3 came out. And now in 2015, the following year, Run All Night. Budget $50 million. Here's where I think it went wrong. It was rated R. It had a domestic run of uh, uh, $26 million. Now, it would take five years later. Oh, wait, go ahead. Yeah, all the directors of all three Takens are the same person. Ah, okay. Uh, Just like John Wick. Yeah, Oliver... Megington and Perry Morrill. If Whoa. I'm saying those right, probably not. And then the two and three is just the Oliver. Yeah. Just Oliver doing the other ones. Just like that. Yep, yep. It's just like John Wick. Okay, so it was a passion project turned into a cash cow starring. I love it. Okay, here we go. Honest Thief in 2020. Now, five years later, after the disastrous box oh. office of Run All Night, Honest Thief, they go back to formula. 2020, rated PG-13, budget unknown. A domestic run of, oh, crap, $14 million. What year was this? This was in 2020. Now, yeah, of that course, makes sense. it does make sense. Can I tell? Can I just say something really quick? Yeah, go ahead. I watch a lot. Like I said, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen yeah. to a lot of people on YouTube, critique movies. I like all that stuff. Yeah. Do you understand how mad I was getting when theaters were shut down, which was fucking annoying, and people were like, this movie came out, and its box office was... Zero. Uh, what a bad film. I'm like... It came out in 2020. You're fuck Like, how stupid are you? You're fucking yeah. retarded. It, you, no shit, it's fucking zero. That's pretty stupid. It yeah. made me so mad. Yeah, that was pretty dumb of me to say. Oh, but in 2020, I guess that's pretty good, because during the pandemic, Liam Neeson holding a gun on a poster still made you 14 goddamn million Hell dollars. yeah, dude. Yep. Okay, now, in 2021, The Marksman comes out. Now, back to formula again, PG-13, with a budget of $23 million, had a domestic run of $15 million. Now, those are just domestic. I think... I saw um, The Marksman. Foreign, I think that made about $22 million altogether. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah. the foreign market loves these type of films. Oh, that's true. Oh, my God. 100%. They'll eat this shit up like crazy. And if you're a small production studio oh. that just landed a Liam Neeson oh, movie, like the, the six one. Get the hell that, out like, of here. You put that this, in the middle of Europe. They're oh. all, they're all <laughs> over there. Yeah, yeah. They'll take it. They'll take it. They'll take it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, this is where I think is the nail in the coffin that everybody knew this was going to be a suicide. This is a tax write-off as a loss. Blacklight 
2022, PG-13, nearly poster-wise, advertising-wise, it probably looks identical. Right, because it's it's that's his role now. Budget of $43 million. $43 million. What are they thinking? Doubling the budget of the marksman has a domestic run so far of $9 million. Oh, jeez. What? I, who who green who who green lanterns this stuff? Who green lights this? <laughs> That's so brutal. Not Martin Campbell, do you look? Holy uh, okay. hell. So according to a verified source from the film IK filmic.com, the production budget for Liam Neeson's cult action thriller, already cult action thriller. I shouldn't read off the website. Uh, memory How is... How the fuck are they going to... That really... What? Yeah. You can't weird. say it's a cult. It's not even out yet. Are they referring to Liam Neeson having a cult? No. Okay, first off, I joined. Second off, no. Uh, you can't call a movie a cult. It's not even out in theaters yet. It's not even released. Hasn't been seen by the public. And you're going to already give it the yeah. insignia of, oh, this is a cult movie, bro. Yeah. Cult classic. For who? That is so pathetic. I never heard of this dot com anyway, so they got to oh use top shelf words. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to try, shelf. <laughs> to try to get a $10 a word there, oh, Jack. It. Yeah. Okay, but there are no signs that the film will collect more than $30 million domestically. So they're saying that the budget was an estimate of $30 million. So that's similar to Blacklight of $43 million. Now, word of mouth. Do you think there's any chance of this? Like uh, making a profit, yeah. <laughs> like being good enough to make a profit. <laughs> no. Are we gonna deal with it's like not, taken? Is Liam Neeson no, waiting for a next no, taken? It's not, no, he's not waiting for next taken. He you think just, the studio wants a next taken? No, yeah. it's Liam Neeson. First off, his manager's probably like, "Hey, here's another." He, I guarantee you, the manager goes, "Here's another film," and he goes, "What's it about?" I don't. know. I do a bit, Liam Neeson. That was good. I thought yeah. he was in the room he goes, for a Whoa, second. What's it about? Yeah. And then he, I have a certain set of skills. <laughs> what's it about? And then she goes, it's just like another Taken. He goes, how much? Oh, that's it. That's and then she goes, uh, again, they got you for, money. they'll get you for $12 million. Right. Like, I'm in. He doesn't yeah. read the script. He doesn't care because it's like, just tell yeah. me what to do. Give me the paycheck and I'll leave. Yeah. The director, the writer, the producers, the actor, everyone knows this isn't the next big thing. It's just, can we entertain some folks? Can they come in and give us money? Give me a paycheck. Adios, and everybody's happy. That's all it is, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if you don't know that, woo, you yeah. need to start reading a book. God, I really wish I can ask Liam Neeson a question right now. You can ask him one question. What would you ask him? Okay, Liam Neeson. Say you. You are. thought I was? Oh yeah, damn it, Liam Neeson. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, um, would you ever make a Dark Man too? <laughs> Trick question. It's already been made. You motherfucker. <laughs> you need All right. help. So that's it. I think that is around. We're wrapping up to about an hour of our first, first. debut pilot podcast. Gumshoe. Everyone knew the movie was a suicide. Yes. Our first case. And it's a suicide? Oh, yeah. We are rough. <laughs> uh, we're rough. Going, and we're going to go investigate. Yes. It's not over yet. We will go watch the movie. Yep. We will go see the crime happen. Dead on arrival. Then decide. Um, and then we will come back. Yep. And we will talk about our predictions. I'm obviously at... Jared thinking it's going to make a two million. Yep. I'm thinking it's going to make two million and one. Number seven in the box office. Number six in the box office. And we'll come back once we go see it as soon as it's released, and uh, we will let everyone know first off what we thought, which is honestly not the important part. There's a million podcasts like that, but then we'll really break it down to be like, yeah, cinematography was trash, writing was shit, acting was great, directing was piss. God, I had a good time doing this. <laughs> Did you have a good time doing this? Oh man, I had a blast. Oh, fuck, man. Okay.